Hello and welcome to today's cryptocurrency technical analysis where I'm going to be going through this bearish Elliott wave count in front of you which will see price heading towards $1,800. Yes, $1,800. Quite a crash from where we are right now. And I know many of you are going to be saying right now, Daniel, you're absolutely crazy. Bitcoin is never going to be going to 1,800. That's impossible. Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you, you know, the probabilities of why we could see this. OK, going off of this Elliott wave count, this lovely channel that we do have and, you know, at least give you a plan ready for if this does occur. So I hope that you thoroughly enjoyed this one. It should be educational for yourselves. And yeah, let's, go, let's just dive straight into the technical analysis here. So it's important to acknowledge firstly that this is a high time frame perspective. OK, so this is a high time frame count. Uh, with that said, it's, it's very, very macro. So we are going to have to come over to the bitstamp chart here to see where we get into this action. OK, so we have the data here back from 2011. So overall, I believe that we've seen wave one, two, three. We're putting in our sideways four before we head up for our fifth wave. OK, so this will mean higher prices to come. OK, much higher prices to come. But nevertheless, I am still expecting this corrective wave last wave to come on the fourth before we do head up for that fifth wave. OK, so let's take a look at the Bitcoin chart then. So as you can see, um, I think first the first thing to, to really point out here is the way that this this channel has really dictated the market thus far. Like it's just been absolutely brilliant. And, you know, channels are one of the most basic you know forms of trading, most basic, but very powerful because they do, you know, really, you know, integrate the um, geometry of the market very very well so when we're seeing the highs and lows i'll talk you through first just the channel okay we can see it going from the highs down to around the midpoint to the low to the low to the low and i'll really zoom in on this so you can just really see how nice it was at these lows okay so from the low 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 obviously loss back test reclaimed support 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 that obviously then gave you your big move up to the midpoint where the midpoint was resistance back into, you know, back in resistance, support, resistance, breakthrough where then you claimed this resistance as support, move back up to the high of the channel. OK, from that high of the channel, we all know what went on here. We had this little triangle, which then broke down, retest, more and more move to the downside before the move up earlier this year before that big move down for the coronavirus type move uh that was obviously a bounce there off the middle of the channel and then that brings us where to where we are now so first of all just really really simply this channel has really dictated the market so we can safely just you know really easily say while we're still within this channel there's no reason to think that we're going to be going to anything, uh, you know, 20k region, all okay, all time high, all time high regions. You know, you, we clearly need to break out of this downtrend channel. This is a macro downtrend channel. And until we break out of that, then we have to acknowledge, uh, you know, bearish targets. OK, um, so how have I got to this point? OK, so how have I got to this point? This is very obviously important. In my opinion, this is all part of a larger frame WXY correction. OK, so my wave two was a fairly simple correction in terms of just a simple ABC zigzag. And we have to see alternation between wave two and wave four. And that, that's where we're seeing the alternation here, where wave two was very simple. Wave four here is a complex WXY correction. OK. So we can see that in the form of the W, the X and the Y. And in my opinion, the way that I have counted this is um, a, a zigzag in the W, zigzag in the X, and then looking for a, basically a triple zigzag here. And you can see the subdivision that I've got here. I'm not going to zoom down too low because I don't want this video to go on forever. But basically, uh, a one, two, three, four, five truncated, um, you know, a truncation in the first wave. So this actually is a truncated first wave. Uh, well, the fifth wave within wave number one. OK, so if you don't understand Elliott wave theory, don't worry. But basically, this is a, a truncation in the first wave and that obviously everything is a fractal. So you within like with, even within this first wave, you will see five sub waves. But basically what we can see here is the one, two, three, four, five down in wave one, two, three, four, five, which is another truncation. So this is a count that has started with a truncation within wave one and then a truncation in the fifth. But in my opinion, this is totally acceptable. What we have to acknowledge is it back back in early 2018, you have to, you know, we were, we were just off the, off the back of a rise of an absolutely incredible, incredible, incredible run late 2016, 2017. You know, we saw thousands and thousands of percent gains. So it was only natural uh, you know, when this correction started, obviously this was the start of our bear market. 
it was only natural that we would see truncations, okay, because of the fact there were still many, many people. I, I remember 2018 very, very well indeed. We had so many balls throughout, during this whole period, even before, even before the crash in November. There was just so many balls. You know, I, I saw time and time again, Bit, you know, there were posts, Bitcoin cannot go under 6K because of the miners, because of X, Y, and Z reasons. You know, there were so many people just saying, Bitcoin cannot go to 6K or, or below 6K. You know, there was just thousands of posts about it. And obviously, during 2018, I was one of the biggest bears in the whole of the market and I was shorting from 17K. And my targets were obviously around 5, 3 and 1.8K. And, you know, that just firstly, acknowledge, you know, just shows you that you have to be trade the market for what it is, trade the market for what it gives you. And don't ever say in trading, that's impossible. That is one certain way to get you wrecked. We are trading a game of probabilities here. Anything is possible. It's possible that Bitcoin goes to $10. It's possible that Bitcoin goes to $1 million. Okay. It is a game of probabilities. Um, so yeah, you know, firstly, never say never. Um, but yeah, as you can see here, truncation, what I have in the, in the A. Okay. So this is our first five waves within the A. And then I have a triangle here in the B, which is simply an A, B, C, D, E triangle. This is a running triangle where your B wave it's obviously going below the start of the A wave. So a running triangle in the B. So five and then our B wave and then coming back down for a one, two, three, four truncation in the fifth here. And this was a tr another truncation in the fifth. But this was off of the back of the start of a very, very you know big rise during that. 2019 period that we saw obviously about 350 percent if I remember correctly just over. Um, so, you know, that was a truncation in the fifth, which was also uh, your diagonal to end. Okay, so we had that diagonal to end here. Uh, diagonals, falling wedges, however you want to refer to it as, obviously is uh, a, a bullish pattern. So we had the bullish pattern. We never got down to the lows, but that was because of the, the, the pattern that we were forming there. And obviously from that falling wedge, we had a lovely impulse out of it. So that, that really, for me, validates the fact that we were in a red here. We were clearly, you know, getting contracting price action, overlapping price action, and then an impulse out of it just confirmed it. And then from there, as you can see, the way I've counted this is an impulse out of that for the one, two, three, four, five to give you an A. And then here, a running flat. So our A, B, C running flat again, running flats highlight to you strength in the market. OK, so when you see your consolidation, OK, when you see your consolidation, I want to highlight this upward sloping like this, that's showing you strength in the market. So instead of the market either downtrending or going sideways, you see even within your corrective period, a high and then a higher low. That is pretty strong, isn't it? <laughs> you know, that, that's that's clearly that's clearly pretty strong. And from that, you get another impulse out of it. Again, a, a, a face ripping impulse where you go straight through, you know, the big 10K level like butter, but like <laughs> really was like butter. You went straight through it, heading up to around that 14,000 uh, level, which, as you all know, was the 618 from the high to the low. So, you know, I'll say it time and time again, 618 Fibonacci, just just lovely also come up to your monthly level there, but this is incorporating other technical analysis. I want to just stick to Elliott Waves in this video. Although, yeah, I, I, I primarily trade off of other technical analysis tools. I obviously still have Elliott Waves in my trading arsenal, and that's what I'm covering in this video. So once we hit, and we, we topped out there at 70, yeah, sorry, 14K, we topped out around $14,000 here on BitMEX, okay? And, you know, from there, we put in that kind of descending triangle-like pattern. You know, that was what that was what was obvious on the charts at first. You obviously had the lower highs going into your more or less flat base, which broke down, and then you, you back-tested that, and then you broke down again. Um, but in terms of an Elliott wave count, I have this more of as a diagonal, so a, a, a starting diagonal here in the A, where we can see again, once again, the overlapping price action with a one, two, three, bit of a flat here in the fourth, coming down for the fifth wave, um, you know, which which obviously brought you down to around this once again six thousand level. You know, six thousand has been pivotal in this market. That, that I'm not I'm not going to say it hasn't. Six K has been absolutely, you know, kind of one would say maybe the fair value, okay, because it it has been supported price for a very long time. Um, so, so it's it's kind of uh, you know it's it's definitely impossible to deny that 6k was an area where not many people were interested in selling, whereas you know arguably work from where we are now there has obviously been interested in buying. We can obviously approach that level once more. We got the reaction off the start of this year. From there, we had our very big drop to the downside, which whether you whether you count this as a flat or whether you have it like here as a WXY, it's, it's really not going to make too much difference to the count ABC or, or WXY. But nevertheless, I've, I've put it here as a WXY, obviously a 333. 
as you can see of our, our last wig leg which we are currently still in okay you can see it's kind of like impulse again correction impulse out of that so i'm looking at this as a 333 wxy um correction that we have here um so you might be saying you know is it possible that we do get another push up here to to actually challenge the top of the channel because you can see here we have not actually um you know once more touch the top of this channel and obviously obviously it's it's possible <laughs> you know i'm, not, I'm never going to say in trading that's impossible i always acknowledge every scenario just as as this is a bearish elliott wave count it would make sense to also have a bullish elliott wave count and then you trade off of your count which is the most probable i i personally believed as i was making this count that this was the mo more probable at least locally was more probable um so you know it's yes yeah, it's absolutely possible we come back and up and test this trend line at the end of the day this this consolidation that we're seeing here what we can see is something like this so do you do you form some form of triangle and actually impulse fully out of it absolutely you can i'm not saying that this is <laughs> you know not going to happen sort of thing um so level to level this is the way that i trade but if this count is correct OK, that would see us putting in lows. OK, obviously th this would be a major high, possibly one more push to the upside, although I am in a, sh you know, a high term time frame short. Uh, that would see one more push to the downside here. And as you can see, we do have the confluences. I'm, I'm not going to go over all the confluences that we have at these levels. Um, but nevertheless, you have, you know, confluence anywhere really between, uh, in my opinion, really around 2800 to 1800. So that one thousand dollar region is where you have a lot of technical confluence for this to be a bottom as you can see obviously this is dependent on the time where this is put in but you can see how the middle of this channel if we are you know i could go over some fibonacci time tools but that's out of the scope of this video as well but you can also see that we would we be looking for around the middle of this channel which would could be around 2600 okay um so that that's kind of the elliott wave count that i have going on here and this is one that i have by the way being uh, shorting from when we were up at the highs okay so when we when we were sat around, you know i've been taking shorts 10,000 9,900 9,800 so I, I do have a, a a higher short position by the way so i'm not entering shorts where we are now 9 9,800 i'm actually in a day trade long sort of thing but that that's where my original so I was originally getting this bearish perspective while we we're up at the highs. And obviously we've, we've, we fell over a thousand dollars from here. So already I've made money on that short. That's important to acknowledge as well. And also it, this does time in with but this um, this distribution pattern that I have going on. So, uh, you know, we, we like or I like to anyway link, um, you know, distribution, reaccumulation, you know, these sort of wick off um, patterns along with my Elliott wave counts as, as well as I like to do Fibonacci and harmonic work with it if, as well, if I'm totally honest with you. But um you know, this was my perspective when we were up at the highs, which which linked in with the Elliott wave count. OK, so viewing this as a potential top also led me into the fact of, you know, highlighting this, um, you know, as, as this bearish Elliott wave count. As you can see, um, that's that's, you know, some things I was saying in, 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 in my group when we we're at nine thousand eight hundred and, and clear we had a thousand dollar drop from there. So that was obviously a, a, a good perspective to have. Um, and so, so that, that leaves us now to a few questions that I can I can preempt that I'm going to have. OK, a few questions that I will I, I imagine that's going to be said here is firstly, Daniel, 1800 is never going to happen. I, I, I to that question, I'll say anything is possible in trading. Don't get into the mindset of that's impossible. Secondly, another question that I will um, preempt that I'll, I'll have is something along the lines of, um, you know, are you going to be shorting to 1,800? No, that's not actually the way that I trade. I trade this level to level. So on these smaller term time frames, you know, I, I'm in a long at the moment and I'm trading off of our actually our sideways range currently. So I'm in a long from, uh, well, I've, I've been in a few long positions over the last few days. But, you know, this is the thing like high term time frame. Yeah, I'm, I'm bearish and I'm in a short, but day trades, I'm, I'm happily trading longs at the moment. There's There's no reason to be bearish down at these levels. And this is like a follow on from what I said in the last video update. So the last video update that I done publicly was, I think, two days ago, three days ago now, um, where in that video I was telling you I was long. And this was off of, obviously off the back of this really big drop to the downside. And just like I emphasize here, like, are you surprised that, you know, everybody's starting to turn bearish now? Firstly, you know, just as I, you know, I repeat my words of the last video that I made on YouTube that up at the highs, everybody's bullish. That's where I was bearish down at the lows. Everybody's bearish. And that's where I'm bullish on a day trade perspective. Obviously, I took that long. 
and I, I'm still in a different long net now. But, um, you know, it's important to just, just to realize basically that I, I'm not going to be shorting here and my tar I'm not holding this short to 1K. There's obviously really important support levels on the way down to, to get to any of these levels. For example, we could, you know, absolutely bounce off of like 7,800 and head back up here. I will look at the data, look at the statistics as we reach each of these levels and, you know, make informed decisions. I'm not, uh, I'm, not I'm, I'm by no means married to a, an Elliott Wave camp. And I also know people just period hate Elliott Wave counts, but I honestly think they're very, very helpful uh, along with other technical analysis tools. So I wouldn't only trade off an Elliott Wave count, but when I can combine my analysis um, with other forms of technical tools, then, you know, it, it, it really is only helpful. OK, um, so, yeah, I hope that you've enjoyed this video, me talking through this count, how, um, you know, how we, we've we got to where we are now and that possibility. Obviously, this would end with an impulse correction, impulse out of this. OK, or obviously just as a simple, you know, five, you know, f f uh, uh, <laughs> impulse correction, impulse correction, impulse sort of, sort of move. But nevertheless, that's how we could envision this getting down towards the 1,800 levels. Absolutely possible. It is. Uh, this is obviously a high time frame channel to be aware of. If we start breaking above this, if we start, you know, taking sort of 10,000, you know, 11,500 levels, then obviously the probabilities of this are absolutely, you know, diminished. But obviously you do have those key resistances to be aware of um, and sort of just a high time frame count to, to, you know, be interested in here. So I hope that this video has served you well, given me you some insights on how I'm trading this on the higher term, obviously on the lower term. Um, you know, that's kind of not so much my perspective. Um, I'm, I'm happy in a long at the moment. But um, yeah, I hope that this video has served you well. Um, that's that's obviously the video update done for you all. I guess I will end by saying this. If you want to actually see how I done this count, so where I'm, I'm actually like drawing out the charts, uh, giving perspective on time. OK, so um, I've done a video for the champions where my chart was started like this, absolutely bare. And then I went through actually doing the Elliott Wave Camp. So if you're interested in actually seeing how I done this Elliott Wave Camp, then that's across for the chart uh, for the champions at chartchampions.com where you can see this count. And also tonight, I do have a contenders live stream. And in tonight's live stream, I'm going to be talking about CVD, uh, cumulative volume delta, and the divergences that we can trade off of this. Honestly, such a powerful trading tool. So if you're interested in actually watching me go through this count from nothing, how I got to it, and, you know, going through all those steps as well as, as tonight, learning about cumulative volume delta, a absolutely massively powerful trading tool, um, then, you know, you can come over, join the team, I'm absolutely, uh, you know, happy to assist you if, if, if you're interested in that. So, um, yeah, hope that you've enjoyed this video. Thank you very much indeed for giving me your time and attention. Hope that it has served you well and have a brilliant day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And goodbye. Cheers.